Thank you, Maisel. All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Ibarra. I'm the business services manager overseeing the small business unit here at Caltrans District 11. I'd like to welcome you all to our day three meet the district office purchasers of our um, 17th annual procurement and resource fair brought to you again virtually this year. So for those of you that joined us for the first two days, thank you. Uh, we hope that you found the information you received useful, useful for you and your company. If you were unable to attend either, either days, we will post the videos on our website within the next week or so for you to view. So the Procurement and Resource Fair is one of the largest annual uh, outreach events hosted by Caltrans District 11 and the Public Agency Consortium. This event provides vendors and contractors with the opportunity to meet our purchasers directly. In this morning session, we will have Mesa come back out to talk about our certifications, Caltrans Recognize, followed by an opportunity to meet a few of our district purchasers from the East Region Mountain Cruise, Lake Hanshaw uh, Station, Maintenance Region Resource. We have our El Centro Travelway, Structural Steel Paint, Special Cruise and Maintenance Support. We have Electrical, Chula Vista Yard, Warehouse, Construction Division, and Kearney Mesa Maintenance Yard. So once you get an opportunity to hear what the district purchasers are looking for uh, to procure, we will reverse the roles and a bit and allow five selected vendors an opportunity to pitch their idea, product or service to everyone in this event during our first ever pitch to D11 component of the fair. So those vendors are fantastic design, intuitive real estate solutions, black box safety, Fascista and Consulting International and Macro Industries. So let's go ahead and kick off today's event by bringing Maisel back out to talk to you about our certifications. Welcome, Maisel. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Hello again, everyone. Um, for those that missed uh, my introduction earlier, I'm Maisel Mathis, District Small Business Liaison for Caltrans District 11. Um, before we bring out our purchasers to discuss what items or services they are looking to procure, uh, we thought we would take a step back and discuss certifications as what certifications your company holds or may or may not be hold can determine whether or not you may or may not be awarded a contract. Um, so let's begin by discussing what certifications Caltrans recognizes. So for state funded contracts, Caltrans recognizes the small business certification which includes the micro small business and small business for the purpose of public works. Um, additionally, we recognize the Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise Certification, also known as DVBE. Uh, there are several different certifications out there that sound similar to these, um, to the ones I just listed. So to clarify, we recognize that small business and DVBE certifications that are certified by the Cal, uh, California State Department of General Services, also known as DGS. If you're interested in looking at eligibility required documents and the application, you may visit the link at the bottom of the screen for Cal eProcure, uh, which is also going to be dropped into the chat for your reference. For federally funded contracts, Caltrans recognizes the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise uh, Certification, also known as DBE. Several, if not all states have their own DBE program, and there are several agencies out there that certify for similar certifications, such as Minority Business Enterprise or MBE, or Women-Owned Business Enterprise, WBE. Caltrans recognizes specifically the DBE certification um, certified by one of the 10 agencies a part of the Cer California Unified Certification Program, also known as CUCP. Um, Caltrans, Office of Civil Rights is actually one of those certifying agencies. Therefore, you can visit the link at the bottom of the slide for more information on that certification process, including eligibility and the application. Again, that link will be dropped in the chat for your reference as well. For state funded contracts, Caltrans has an overall goal of 5% um, utilization of DVBE certified firms and 25% of certified small businesses, which includes micro and small business for, pub 
for the purpose of public works, like I mentioned before. For federally funded contracts, Caltrans has increased its goal as of October 1st of this year from 17% uh, to 22.2%. Um, so by taking that first step and getting your company certified, you're helping us reach our goals by increasing the pool of ready, willing, and able businesses. And you're helping yourself by increasing opportunities for your company. Right. So now that you have a basic understanding of the certifications Caltrans recognizes, let's meet our district purchasers to hear about those opportunities. So let's bring uh, begin by bringing out our first purchaser who's representing the East Region Cruz. Do we have Javier Ruiz? Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, Javier. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Glad yes. to be here. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. If you want to begin by introducing yourself a little bit and what your role is uh, with your division. So my division is in uh, division of maintenance. Um, I'm the maintenance supervisor for Lake Henshaw Station, which incorporates eastern San Diego County, San Isabel, Julian, Ramona, uh, Warner Springs, uh, Oak Grove, those areas, Route 76, 78, and 79 in, in this section of, of, the, of the county. Um, so I basically am responsible for all the routes in my section, uh, any maintenance uh, work that needs to be done. Um, so I would say lateral support shoulder work, mechanical control mowing of the shoulders, unpaved shoulders, weed abatement is included with that, haul hole repairs, uh, drain and culvert cleaning. Uh, we have those up here, uh, crack sealing of the roadbed of the roadways, um, guardrail repairs, which incorporate uh, tools needed for that. that that sort of thing, and then any delineation maintenance, uh, guide markers, um, carcinites, those type of items. So in a nutshell, that's basically what we do up here, um, basically just jack of all trades when it comes to uh, this crew, so. Okay, so those are a list of the frequently purchased items from your division. Are there any things that you are looking to procure in the near future? In the near future, um, I know, I know we've done some, some purchasing in the past few months to get ready for our winter ops, winter operations, but with that said, so we're looking for a, a good quality sand, uh, manufactured sand for de-icing, uh, for covering the roadways when it comes to ice and, uh, and snow, um, class two uh, base material for, uh, for shoulder work, for repairing shoulders. Um, other things that, that would come into play for us, like hardware repair, like cordless power tools, like impact wrenches, those type of things. Um, and then uh, for, say, for BMP, for BMP maintenance, uh, straw waddles, uh, definitely uh, purchase those uh, occasionally to, to help out with our, with our efforts there. Um, and basically that's it right now from what, what I can see, what, what I normally would buy. That's, you know, every year or two, just to kind of give you an idea. But it's basically when we need it, you know, we, we reach out and we, uh, Try to get that that stuff uh, for my area, for my section in Lake Henshaw, but also to incorporate the East Region Mountain Cruise, uh, which include Boulevard Descanso and Santee. So. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Javier. So everyone in the audience, there is a, an overview of their needs list that he just explained on the screen. We will be sharing um, all of this information shortly after the event as well. So how can you? Um, how can a participant today, Javier, submit a needs or a quote to you? Uh, the best way for me is through my email. Uh, and I believe it was um, on the on the information sheet with my name and uh, what station okay. I have. Uh, so Javier.Ruiz at dot.ca.gov. Perfect. It was also on the previous slide for those participating today. And again, we will send this out. All right. Thank you, Javier. Let's see if there's any questions for you specifically. Alex, are there any questions for Javier? Yes, we have a couple questions. Um, so who is responsible for your area emergency disaster supplies? That's a great question. So I would be uh, responsible to coordinate and, and secure resources in that matter. Um, so emergency disaster. So I would I would be the the first point of contact. So uh, notify me, contact me in any in any in that case, and then um, I can proceed from there. 
Great, thank you. And then just one more question. Do you also maintain the signals and do the troubleshooting for the signals? Are we talking about the traffic signals? I believe so, yes. Okay, that would be uh, electrical or, or rail electrical signals. Food. I'm sorry, rail signals. Um, Rail signals, uh, negative. No, uh, that okay. would be another another department slash probably private company that deals with that. Okay, great. That's all the questions, Lisa. Thank you so much, Javier. Um, so we'll go ahead and go on to our next panelist. I'd like to introduce Noreen. N Excuse me if I pronounce your last name incorrectly. Nadalni. She's with Maintenance Region Resource. Hi, Lori, how are you? Good morning, I'm good, how are you? <laughs> well, did I completely butcher your last name? I'm, I apologize. <laughs> no, you did fine, thanks. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, Alex, if you can just switch the slide to the next. We have um, Lori's contact information if you need that as a reference, but Lori, if you could just introduce yourself and explain your role and what Maintenance Region Resource is. So, I'm Lori Nadonley. I'm an AGPA for the maintenance support side of the house. I do purchasing for all the regions, east, west, and the district office for all office supplies. It's basically in a nutshell. <laughs> so, you primarily, is that what you primarily purchased in the past? Yeah. And okay, I do so help, and I do help the guys with their, with their purchases, but. Yeah, basically all I do is office supplies. Okay, so for all the, the field offices or is it just one specific area? Everywhere, east, right. west, and the district office. So I do everything, um, paper, toner, office supplies, anything that to keep the office running. All right, perfect. Do you plan on in, uh, doing any purchases in the near future? Yes. That you need quotes on? Um, yes. Is there anything specific that you wanted to name? Uh, we're needing just pens, pencils, um, paper, hole punchers, uh, just, you know, just generic everything to run an office. Okay. Sounds good. How can someone, um, submit their needs list or excuse me, their quote to you through my email. Okay. Perfect. Then, which we share, we will share again with the audience. Um, Alex, is there any questions specifically for Lori? No questions at this time for Lori. Well, thank you, Lori, for joining us today. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. So I'd like to bring out the next panelist. We have Jimmy Smith for El Centro Travelway. He is going to be speaking on behalf of Mario Escobar. Hi, Jimmy. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Just making sure I'd call in also the speaker on the computer doesn't work. So. Oh, okay. You, per, you did. I can hear you just fine. Thank you. Hey, okay, my name um, is Bruce so, Smith. I'm the maintenance uh, superintendent in Imperial County. Uh, I have uh, four crews here that I'm responsible for: three travelway crews and a combination functional landscape and marking crew. And the travelway crews are basically similar to Javier's crews. We're responsible for all the state facilities between the fence lines: the fence, traffic safety devices, guardrails, guideposts. Uh, Mowing, uh, rush control, and then uh, anything on the pavement, pavement repair, pavement maintenance, pavement preservation. So we just, we're involved in a lot of different things. Okay, perfect. Is that a description of items you frequently purchase or is there any specific items you guys are looking to purchase? Well, we frequently purchase a, a, a number of things throughout the year. We've, uh, we purchased power tools, drills, effect wrenches, saws, a lot of hand tools, wrench sets, ratchets, sockets. We also have uh, two rest areas that we're responsible for and numerous landscaped areas that require continually uh, purchasing water pumps, irrigation controllers, valves, and some other miscellaneous parts. That's an ongoing thing. They just, they're, they're, they're just purchased continually. Uh, okay. And as That's the in the next few months, our maintenance crews or our travel crews, we're going to be focusing on pavement maintenance and preservation. So we will here in the near future, we will probably be looking to purchase the materials for fog seals, slurry seals, microsurfacing, uh, some crack sealant materials for crack sealing, 
uh, uh, just, uh, just a lot of different type of materials. I couldn't give you the entire list. Okay, that, that's actually a lot of great information. I know that you said that there's a lot of items that you frequently purchase ongoing. How does a vendor that does provide those products um, get in front of you guys, or how do they submit their capability statements or inventory lists to you? Uh, e email is the preferred way. Uh, okay. It's easier. I, I'm really good at responding to emails, and that's okay. and uh, that's a pretty good way to get the information out to me. Okay, will that be t directly to you for your unit, or would that be Mario? Oh, uh, I'm the superintendent, so I don't directly make the purchases. But the supervisors, they there's four of them. They they make the purchases. They all have Cal cards, or they submit RQSs or POs. Uh, I don't make the purchases directly, so okay. I could provide you with their names and email addresses, and you could contact them directly. All right. Well, thank you, Jimmy, for Welcome. providing that information. Um, I'd like to open the floor for any questions for Jimmy directly. Is there any questions, Alex? Yes, we have one question. Um, do you buy organic fertilizer? Fertilizer? No, we don't purchase fertilizer. <laughs> no, yeah, I guess the bottom line is no. <laughs> thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Are there any other questions, Alex? That's it, Meso. All right, thank you, Jimmy, for joining us today. Thank we you. appreciate it. Let's go ahead and introduce our next panelist. We have Laura Mel Melisa. <laughs> uh, she is representing Structural Steel Paint. Hi, Laura, how are you? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so, okay. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to introduce yourself a little bit and explain uh, what structural steel plant is, what do you do for your area, um, et cetera. Okay, so I'm the structural steel painter supervisor for the Coronado Bridge. Uh, my responsibilities are maintaining the, the uh, paint and the structure and the steel structure. And we do this throughout the year. Um, so our, 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 our maintenance, um, normally what we do is we do the surface prep and the application of different coatings and the coatings are specialized, uh, uh state certificate, uh, certified coatings. And we utilize our surface prep by using power tools, sandblasting. Uh, we usually purchase a lot of PPEs like respirators, uh, the respirator cartridges, blast hoods, a lot of abrasives like sanding discs, um, the <clears throat> the sand, the media for the uh, sand blasting. We also do a lot of pressure washing, so we purchase uh, hoses for the pressure washers, uh, hoses for the paint application for the uh, spray equipment of uh, conventional spray equipment and airless and spray guns, spray tips, um, power tools, and all our power tools that we use are mostly pneumatic for the bridge. Um, we have a list of some of the items that uh, we normally purchase I put out there. Yes, and, it's currently showing on the screen as well. Yeah, so a lot of consumables like paint, Consumables like um, uh, the sanding disc, the uh, sandpaper, paintbrushes, and things like that. Uh, Are cover all ongoing purchases, Laura? Or is yes. this just okay? Yeah, so this list would be mostly like ongoing, uh, you know, except for the like, uh, so right now I'm looking into getting the. Um, Blast hoods, the clinical blast hoods. So that wouldn't be something that I purchase all the time, but it's what I need that I have right now and some of the power tools. But as far as the sandpaper and all the abrasives, the uh, respirator cartridges, that's an ongoing um, through the year. Okay. Um, I don't know if uh, some of those items that you list that are ongoing are on the items you plan to purchase, but are there a few that you wanted to highlight that you need specific items for that you're planning to purchase uh, in the near future? Okay, so they, uh, the filter cartridges for the respirators, uh, uh, paint sundries, paint consumables, like uh, 
uh, let me see, like the uh, cleaner bags for the paint, uh, the sandpapers, and the sanding disc. Those are, I'm looking into getting those uh, in the near future. The spray socks and the Tyvek coveralls. And those are needs that we need right now. So we'll be getting them in the near future. Okay, thank you, Laura. So if our, someone in our audience today wanted to submit a quote to you, how would they do so? They can email me and then also uh, some of the stuff is really specific to the job. So like if there's any questions, once they contact me, we can make, um, you know, we can clear up uh, some of the questions on the equipment and some of the safety PPEs. Uh, it's easier that way. So that list is kind of a general one that you can bid on. And then I will, I can reach out to you. You send me your information and then I will reach back to you to add or uh, check on the different or even a different brand name or something that we use. To, um, so yeah, uh, that I will do to make sure that we got the, we get the right stuff. Thank you so much, Laura, for explaining that. Um, there seems to be a lot of opportunities for those that are out there in the audience, especially with Laura's unit. So I would highly encourage you all to take note of her needs list. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add before we open the floor up for questions, Laura? Uh, just when you submit your quotes, make sure that you, you submit the, any other required paperwork because you know that would um, speed up the process. Uh, like sometimes we need your sales permit and those kind of items. And uh, when we re you reach out to me, if I need any paperwork, I will let you know also. Okay, perfect. So we're going to emphasize that pay attention and follow instructions. <laughs> All right. So is there any questions, Alex, that Laura can answer today? No questions at this time. All right. Well, they let you off easy, Laura, and we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Welcome. So for our next panelist, I'd like to introduce Carlos Omaya from Special Crews and Maintenance Support. He is also representing um, Adrian Dinesta. So if I, I don't know if Carlos is there, Carlos? Are you, are you there? Good morning. Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Perfect. Um, if you wanted to introduce yourself, Carlos, and talk a little bit about what Special Crews is and Maintenance Support and what your role is with them. But it's actually a special program. Special Cruise is actually under uh, my superintendent, which is Michael Kendall. Uh, we're pretty much in charge of litter, mowing, vegetation, on vegetation, uh, about the highway, you know, homeless activity, um, well, on shelter people, and a lot of power too. We do a little bit of everything as well. Anything that had to do with fire break, as, uh, you know, as well. You know, I've been I'm a supervisor for, like I said, Santee Special Programs. Uh, being here four years, 10 years with the state. Uh, but yeah, we do purchase a little bit of everything. All right, perfect. So I have a list on the screen showing um, some typically purchase, uh, you frequently purchase items. Is there anything um, that you plan to purchase in the near future that you would like a quote for? Yeah, we're actually looking, uh, we want to do gas power tools for more of everything we're trying to, uh, they're trying us to do um, battery tools, like weed whackers, chainsaws and stuff like that. They want to go more of the green now instead of using uh, emissions control. Okay, all right, great. So if someone in the audience does have those types of tools, um, who is their best point of contact and how should they submit their, co their quote? Uh, actually, if you look at the email, uh, send it to my email, carlos.amaya.ca.gov. They can send me an email right there with the power tools, pricing, and everything. And then I can run command through my supervisor, my superintendent, and go from there. All right. Sounds good. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we ask or open up for questions? Uh, no, like I said, it's pretty basic. We do a lot of, like, the littering, litter picking, We uh, a lot of litter bags. You know, um, power tools is our main thing that we use, chainsaw, weed whackers, and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of everything we do. Okay, sounds good. Um, Alex, is there any questions that Carlos can answer? Not at this time, Lisa. All right. Oh, well, actually, thanks. actually, we just got one. Actually, we did. Uh, aside from item purchasing, are there parts of encampment cleanup that you're that you're um, 
out to third. Oh, that you give out to third party services, especially with biohazard. No, unfortunately, everything is run through a contract. So they have to have a contract license and everything, and they have to um, put in a bid, and then it goes to a bid, and then they decide who's our contractor going to be. Okay, great. And then just one more. Um, do you do any maintenance on the rail side? No, that's actually functional, which will uh, be uh, Eric Sterling. They do all the functional work through guardrail. And then, Carlos, can you just repeat your email? And also for the audience, we'll be sure to get all of this information out to you as well after the presentation. Yeah, so it'll be Carlos.amaya, A M A Y A, at DOT. Dot ca.gov. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Carlos, for joining us today. Thank you. You guys have a great day. You as well. Um, I'd like to invite. Did, I was want to just double check. Was Martin able to join us today? Oh, okay. We also have Martin Escalante. He's here today representing Electrical. How are you, Martin? You may need to unmute. Okay. Good morning. I'm here. Good Thanks. morning. Well, welcome, Martin. If you wanted to introduce yourself a bit and talk about what electrical does, what you do for electrical, um, what is it involved, all the good stuff. Absolutely. Yes. Good morning to everybody. Thank you for participating and thank you guys for putting on this important event. Um, I am an electrical supervisor for the East San Diego County region. I supervise a crew of electricians that maintain all of the ele electrical assets on the state highway system. Uh, anything from lighting, uh, traffic signals, ramp metering, uh, traffic monitoring equipment. Uh, I have included the needs list, which is um, by no means exhaustive. Those are just things that I have purchased in the past. And uh, because electrical, um, electrical technology is always developing and new products are being introduced, it's, it's very difficult for me to uh, say for sure what we will need to purchase, but this list will give you a bit of an idea. Um, one of the things that uh, we do buy outside is um, some of our safety PPE equipment, like fall protection equipment, which uh, we have to replace after a certain, you know, it reaches its lifespan. Uh, electrical tools and med metering equipment. So, yeah, those, those are some of the things that, that we need to purchase. Well, thank you, Martin. Um, you did say electricals ever evolving. If there is a vendor out there that has. An innovative product that might be electrical driven, how do they get that in front of you? Well, actually, uh, yeah, the, uh. Vendors really help us out in this way because we are not allowed to purchase sole source. So we, we need to go through the competitive bidding process and have you guys um, uh, give us quotes on this equipment. And uh, uh, just as an example, recently I had to purchase some uh, sensors that they use at a California Highway Patrol inspection station for detecting the height of the vehicles going through. <clears throat> and that was uh, kind of an oddball item that um, I had to purchase and go through different vendors for bids on. Ah, well, thank you for sharing that example, Martin. Um, how does someone submit or contact electrical, like a quote um, for those particular items? My email address is included, I believe, and yes. that is probably the best way to reach me. All right, so everything will go through you then? 
Yeah, uh, each individual supervisor uh, responsible for the different regions in San Diego County, uh, we make those purchases, yeah. All right, well, thank you, Martin, for joining us. Um, I'd like to bring out Alex to see if there's any questions that we can ask um, that we might have for you, Martin. Alex, no questions at this time, Lisa. All right. Well, thank you, Martin, for joining us today. We appreciate all the information you gave us. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go ahead and introduce the next panelist. We have Shane Reese and Eric Sterling from Chula Vista Yard. Um, welcome, Shane. Welcome, Eric. I believe um, it was Carlos that also mentioned that Eric uh, does take care of the functional items. So if you did have that specific question, um, Eric will be on at this panelist. All right, Shane, I think I see you first. So if you wanted yeah. to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your role with Silvis Yard and then you yourself also, Eric. Okay, yeah. So I'm the travelway supervisor for the Chula Vista Maintenance Yard. We kind of do any, everywhere from the border to downtown and um, kind of over to Spring Valley. Nice big circle over there. Um, we do roadway repairs. So we have a lot of concrete repairs, asphalt repairs. Um, Is Eric's footprint a little bit different? Um, Eric, did you want to explain that or? Yes. Yeah, what, what we do is a little different. We're more guardrail and repairing um, things that get crashed into. It's non-electric. And our area of coverage is a little bigger. We go out in the east a little bigger. Uh, downtown San Diego to the border, a little bit out in El Cajon Lakeside, and up in a 94 area. And then uh, we'll be buying different uh, miscellaneous parts for hardware and facilities out on the road, such as guardrail, uh, crash cushion parts, uh, signs, delineation, stuff like that, fence. Okay, how about you, Shane? Um, what do you guys typically purchase? Um, typically, we are purchasing I have, I also do graffiti in our area. So paint sprayers, handless cord, cordless ones, um, air hoses and stuff for those sprayers. Um, and then also power tools. So like backpack blowers, pull saws, chainsaws, hedgers. Well, I'm glad that a couple of you purchasers actually mentioned graffiti because we do have a vendor that will be presenting at the later end of this presentation for maybe a possible solution to that. So, um, I would that being said, is there any other items that you guys look to purchase in the near future that you might want quotes on? Um, mine in the near future, all those power tools. So the backpack blowers, hedgers, pull pruners, chainsaws, and probably a couple of the graffiti sprayers too. Okay, and yourself, Eric, is there any key items that you'd like a quote on? Yeah, everything on the list there that I submitted recently. Also, the list has grown quite a bit. Um, okay. A lot of other miscellaneous hardware type stuff, um, probably welding supplies, torch supplies, um, harness and lanyard type stuff for personnel hoist for the lift, um, other sign hardware, fence hardware, Lots of nuts and bolts, miscellaneous stuff, saw blades. We're always buying saw blades, grinder wheels, that kind of thing. Okay, great, perfect, Eric. So if you could just submit us the extensive list that you're talking about, we would definitely love to connect as many small businesses that can provide quotes for that, just so it helps alleviate you having to go out and find out those products. Yeah, of course, I'll definitely do that, and I'll 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 probably break things down into smaller purchases of like items. Perfect. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, so, is there any questions that we can um, ask Shane or Eric today, Alex? Yes. So, um, do you do anything with rail signals? No. Okay. I believe that's all the city or empty or the trolley station and stuff like that. Okay. And then, what about things like sunscreen or hydration? The warehouse carries a lot of that stuff. They do carry the sunscreen now and they carry the jugs for water. So that's not something we're going to be purchasing. Okay. Speaking of the warehouse, they will, be, I believe they are our next panelist. So uh, if there isn't any further questions, are there, Alex? 
No, nope, no further questions, Nico. Well, thank you, Shane and Eric, for joining us today. We appreciate your participation. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, perfect segue to our warehouse. We have a Mario Jesse Gomez here today representing warehouse. How are you, Jesse? Good. How's everybody doing? Doing well. Um, thank you for coming today. If you want to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the warehouse, it sounded like Chilvisa you already kind of explained a little bit what you have if you want it to go in more detail. Yeah, I'm Mario Gomez. I'm the um, one of the material and store specialists here at the District 11 warehouse. Um, we buy uh, lots of different things, you know, everything from could be restroom supplies like paper towels and toilet paper, um, things like soap, bar soap. Um, we do purchase a lot of asphalt and like five gallon buckets, trash cans, things like that as well. So we, we purchase a little bit of everything. Okay, perfect. So for the warehouse, can you explain a little bit um, what the warehouse services or where they service? Um, we service all of the crews in District 11, um, maintenance, everybody pretty much can order from us. Um, uh, yeah, from, from, from the coast to the desert. All right, perfect. Is there any items that you, or key items that you plan to purchase in the near future? Yeah, um, we will be purchasing some irrigation supplies coming up. We need some valves, some couplings, and some, um, a couple other things that, that, that we're going to be needing coming up pretty soon. Okay, and um, I, there's just 1 question I usually commonly receive from the small business team for mm -hmm. a warehouse. <clears throat> if you wanted to explain when, what are items that that you typically procure from directly from the vendor or stuff that might have to go through other channels? Um, I know that we might have leverage procurement agreements or whatnot that. They can't sell directly to the warehouse. Um, do you know any top items that typically you don't procure from? They usually come from a contract. That's usually things like um, guardrail, like the big, big item things that you'll see, like on the freeway, like guardrails and things like that. Um, there are contracts for those items. Yeah. Okay. So, for example, in the previous uh, panels that we had for sunscreen, um, is that something that you might procure directly, or is there some type of contract they might have to be under? Well, for for sunscreen, um, that item is carried at the Sacramento warehouse. So we kind of operate in something called like hub and spoke. So they're the main warehouse, and they they distribute their items to us and we distribute them out to the crews. Um, but however, there are items that they don't carry. And those are the items that we purchase that um, okay. I had mentioned before, but sunscreen is one of the items that that Sacramento does carry. So if a vendor was looking to uh, sell some sunscreen, it would be the Sacramento warehouse that they would want to contact for that. Really great information. Thank you, Jesse. Is there a way or what's the best way that they can submit a quote to your office if there's something you do purchase? Um, you can email me directly at mario.gomez, dot uh, ca dot gov. Oh. Like everybody, um, and yeah, I'll respond to you as soon as I can. All right. Well, thank you for participating today, Alex. Is there any questions specifically for Jesse? I'm sorry, I keep going interchange from Mario and Jesse. So. That's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I go by Jesse, but my my name is Mario. <laughs> Mario Jesse. <laughs> is there any questions for him today? Yes, we have a couple questions actually. Um, the first one is do you use RFID for asset tracking? Oh, that's nothing I'm familiar with. Nothing I've seen come through here. Okay. And is there a warehouse for each district or one central warehouse? Well, each each district has a warehouse. The the main uh warehouse is in Sacramento. They're the, they're the big one that We'll distribute a lot of the products out to us. Okay, great. And what happens with materials that have been replaced? Um, this person is wondering if you repurpose rail signal controllers or if that's something that would go up to auction. That I'm not too sure about. Um, we don't carry things like uh, rail railroad supplies or anything like that, so I'm not too familiar. I know if an item is is obsolete. Um, there are there are ways that we get rid of it, um, but um, we don't have anything like that here. Okay, and then is there a like a warehouse that would house disaster supplies, or is that just included in in one in each district's warehouse? As far as disasters, it would depend on what supplies. Um, I mean, we have a lot of things that would go in like first aid kits and things like that, and um, usually when when there is some kind of a disaster, like with the pandemic, they automatically just distributed out the items from 
from the warehouse to us and things like that. Okay, great. Thank you, Jesse. Those are all the questions, Miso. Well, thank you so much, Alex, and we appreciate your participation today, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You as well. And now I'd like to introduce Manasse from the construction division. How are you? Hello. So hard. I wanted to start digging. Good morning. Good morning, Manasse. How are you? Doing fine. Good. If you would like to introduce yourself and talk a little bit more about the construction construction division, it is it does seem to be a little bit different from maintenance. So if you wanted to explain that a little bit. Yeah, of course. The uh, Construction is uh, construction division for district 11 uh, covers all of San Diego and Imperial counties. And we have highway projects going on, of course, um, throughout both counties. Uh, the main, main thing that the construction division does is um, we're out there inspecting uh, the actual construction that's going on. So my job is the um, resident engineer uh, office coordinator and also the contract manager for the construction division is to establish um, temporary uh, field offices again in both san diego and imperial counties and we also have uh, laboratory trailers on site uh, where our uh, testers can test materials um, now uh, construction division does have uh, a position for purchasing that position is being filled. So I am filling in right now uh, for this uh, procurement fair uh, on behalf of the construction division. And um, uh, I think I, uh, we provided some of the things that we have uh, a need for right now. Uh, those are primarily for the laboratory testing facility. Um, which uh, needs to be stocked with uh, scientific equipment, uh, scales, ovens, um, a lot of technical devices. And then there are some, some items that uh, need to be procured for replenishing or maintaining the, uh, the laboratories uh, in the field offices, like each vac filters, um, LED lights, um, and I think there is a, a current need for uh, a few thermometers, uh, various level levels, uh, and those types of things. Perfect. Is there, um, I see a couple of items there that you plan to purchase in the near future. Are there any specifics you wanted to highlight on that? Or is there any additional products that you would like quotes on? Um, well, again, the, the ones that I'm aware of, um, are some of those recurring items like HVAC filters, LED light bulbs for both interior and exterior. Uh, and then there are also um, a few levels. Uh, again, these are very specific types of levels that are used out in the field. Uh, some are like six feet, 10 feet long. Um, and then uh, a number of thermometers and filters. Thank you for clarifying, Manasse. So, how what because you're complete uh, filling in for a position right now? How does a vendor reach out to the construction division for to provide a quote or maybe a list of items that might benefit the construction? Yeah. Division? So, so we do have a uh, a common email. It's the District Eleven Construction Admin. So it would be. D11 admin, um, excuse me, D11 construction admin at dot.ca.gov. And then um, we have somebody who's reviewing e emails that come in and then they get assigned um, to the appropriate person. And hopefully we'll have the person who does the purchasing and, and then they'll be checking that regularly and responding. All right, perfect. Thank you, Manasse. Um, for the audience, I do have that email on the screen and it will be shared again with everyone today. Uh, Alex, is there any questions that Manasse can answer today? Yes, so 
We have someone asking if the laboratory specialists use any specific personal protective equipment. Uh, we, we absolutely comply with all safety requirements. That's our number one priority in Caltrans, both, uh, you know, in the laboratories out in the field and wherever we go. So, yes, uh, personal protective equipment is used um, as required. Uh, I believe our warehouse does uh, maintain and supply a lot of that. Um, but, um, would always be open to see if there's something new or uh, some other type of PPE. We're, we're open to that. Okay, great. And then do any of the construction purchasers um, purchase services? And if so, what kind of services? So, um, services would be related to maintaining the the operation of, of the actual uh, field office. We have security alarm services, um, your um, trash and recycling services, a um, number of the, of, of the basic operations, and those are done by a contract that go out to bid. Again, we do look for small businesses that qualify for that. So small businesses that are Certified with the state, they're listed on the Cal eProcare site, which uh, is somewhere that uh, we would go and take a look at for those type of vendors that are providing those kind of services. If we need to have a moving contract service, uh, again, we would go and look for um, certified moving contractors, contact them, and solicit bids directly from them. Okay, great. Those would be all the questions for now, Meso. Wow, Thank great. you so much, um, Alex and Manasseh, for participating. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and introduce our last but not least panelist. We have Jeff Franken from the Kearney Mesa Maintenance Yard. How are you, Jeff? I think you just have to hit unmute and then we should Sorry, be here. <laughs> no worries. Hi, welcome, Jeff. How are you? Uh, oh, I'm good, ma'am. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. okay, I can hear you now. Um, if you wanted to introduce yourself, Jeff, and talk a little bit about what you do, I know that it's a specific role with the Kearney Maintenance Yard, and then uh, what actually Kearney Mesa Maintenance Yard covers. Okay, uh, my name is Jeff Franken, and I'm a maintenance supervisor for a, a crew that was formed two years ago. It's called the Customer Service Request Crew. And basically, we um, address uh, service requests with issues such as graffiti and litter uh, in, a, in a timely manner. We, we abate graffiti through the metro area, which includes downtown. We go up to um, the 56. We do the 8, 163, we have quite a quite a large area. And then we also litter and do minor landscape work uh, throughout District 11 and, and San Diego County. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so in your particular unit uh, for customer service request team, uh, what type of items do you typically purchase? and? Are there specific ones that you need quotes on that you would like to purchase in the near future? Typically, I just make a, a couple major purchases in a year. Um, maybe every six months, I'll purchase um, equipment and supplies for our uh, airless paint sprayers, um, roller pads, roller frames, uh, tip guards, filters, pump saver, uh, throat seal lube. Guns, hoses, tips. Um, so I'm also looking to purchase some landscape power tools, string trimmers, chainsaws, pole hedgers, and also some fall protection equipment. We actually go up on the bridge mounted overhead signs to, to clean graffiti. Um, so I'm looking for some new uh, fall protection equipment, such as body harnesses and some shock absorbing lanyards. All right. 
Well, sounds good, Jeff. Um, how does a company submit their quote to you? I would uh, prefer quotes to go through my email address. Okay. Um, I have jeff.franken at dot.ca.gov. Is that the correct one? That is. All right, perfect. So um, is there anything else you would like to add before we open up for questions? Um, I just want to thank the vendors for taking the time to uh, to meet with us as, and also your staff. I, I appreciate the technical help. <laughs> Thanks. It's <laughs> our pleasure. And it's a, it's a, a pleasure to be able to connect the purchasers to the vendors um, because I think that's what a lot of them do. How do we meet these purchasers and which is why we intent that's the main intent for this event. So thank you for participating. Alex, is there any questions for Jeff today? Yes, we have one question for Jeff. How does your team handle encampments that, that contain biohazards? Do you request for a bid and how does that work? Uh, my crew uh, typically doesn't uh, deal with encampments and that's, I believe, all contracted out. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Jeff. We appreciate you being here today and uh, participating on our procurement fair. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay, everyone. So now we would like to switch gears and hand the floor over to the small businesses that were selected to pitch their product to Caltrans District 11. Each vendor was given an opportunity to submit a two minute video to talk about their product, their service, or an idea that they may have. After each video, the vendor will be given two minutes to answer questions from the audience, including Caltrans staff and observing local agencies. So please submit your questions um, as you have them and identify which vendor your question is directed to. Today, you will be hearing from Fantastic Design, Intuitive Real Estate Solutions, Black Box Safety, Vasishta Consulting International and Macro Industries. With that being said, let us jump right into our first pitch from Fantastic Design. And thank you for your patience, everyone, as we um, get the video going. As an organization, you all have put in so much dedication and care to your projects. My goal as a graphic designer is to bring your vision to life and deliver your message to the public. Hi, my name is Lin Fan Wong, designer and owner of Fantastic Design a DBE, SE, WBE certified company. We have been in business for over 15 years, assisting clients to deliver their ideas to the public through graphic design, printing, and promotional items. One of our most recent projects was working as a subcontractor with APCOM to provide graphic design services to the center we work closely with the Outwist team to provide uh, marketing materials such as newsletters, brochures, postcards, PowerPoint template, and event invitations. Fantastic Design will help you to deliver your vision to the public through quality graphic design services. So we hope you consider Fantastic Design for your marketing Thank you. As an organization, you all have
So I wanted to bring Lynn out to the stage. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lynn. How are you? Thank you for being Great. here today. Thank you for having me. Um, I wanted to know, you know, what innovative products have you worked on recently? Uh, the most recently that I work uh, as a subcontractor with AECOMS to provide graphic design services for San Diego Unified School District. So we work closely with uh, their outreach team to provide marketing materials such as newsletters, brochures, postcards, uh, PowerPoint templates, and uh, event uh, invitation. Great. And what um, would be the best way to contact you? Uh, you can email me at uh, lwong at fantasticdesign.com. Okay, great. Well, thank you again, and uh, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so we will go ahead and move on to our next um, vendor pitch from Intuitive Real Estate Solutions. A blank wall is a blank canvas. It's an open invitation for taggers, an invitation we keep renewing every time we paint over it. They tag, you paint. They tag, you wash. A constant, repetitive, and costly effort. Isn't it absurd? Shouldn't there be a smarter way? There is. Green Cape. Green Cape is a synthetic foliage solution combining beautification with graffiti deterrence. Let's take a look at some of the Caltrans sites to see how they can benefit from the Green Cape application. Green Caping is the act of installing the eco-friendly, low-maintenance, artificial foliage to any structure to instantly beautify its surroundings. Caltrans, like other DOTs, are looking for eco-friendly and cost-effective strategies for beautification. Painting and power washing walls requires costly maintenance. Living plants use water resources in a state faced with constant drought. Since 2019, Green Cape has been widely used at various sites by LA County Metro. Green Cape prevents tagging and minimizes its associated financial and environmental costs, improves ambiance through enhanced appearance and reduced reflected heat, provides immediate, low maintenance, long term coverage. Your blank wall is their blank canvas. Your solution, Green Cape. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring Joe Williams out. Joe, are you with us today? Hi, I'm here. Hi, Joe. How are you? I am good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, do you want to tell us about any um, big projects that you've been on? Yes, uh, actually, for the last 3 years, we've been actually uh, providing this service or this product and service to uh, LAMTA or Metro. Uh, we've uh, did our installations uh, throughout their uh, stations and uh, the installations have proven uh, very successful uh, to saving costs as well as beautifying areas and uh, deterring graffiti or taggers. 
Awesome. Um, I did want to open it up to our panelists. If any of our panelists have questions um, or our audience as well, any questions for Joe? Um, if our panelists, you can unmute yourselves and you can go ahead and ask, or for anyone in the audience, you can drop your question in the chat. Um, while we wait for any incoming questions, Joe, what is the life expectancy of your product? Right now, the life expectancy is seven years. Okay, great. Hi, this is uh, uh, David Cortez over here with uh, 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 Materials Engineering. Um, I have a question for you. How do how does exactly do you do you glue it on to 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 the concrete surface, or or how how, how does the process go? Actually, um, we uh, apply the uh, application uh, with a one and a half. Uh, I'm sorry, a one and a quarter inch screw along with a washer, and uh, those screw and washers are in. In fact, um, uh, we use a five by seven sheet and they come in one inch, uh, one foot squares. And so we use approximately 20 uh, screw and washers in each sheet. Does that make sense? Yes. And, 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 uh, and so the life expectancy you said was what? I'm sorry. Seven years right now. We've been testing over a seven year period. And that's uh, in uh, in the California elements. Okay, and so that that that's for mm, uh, discoloration and, and you know um, it, just the screws coming out or anything like that. that that's about exactly. Uh, as an example, with Metro, uh, we provide ongoing maintenance, and that maintenance is a one uh, monthly maintenance uh, whereby we uh, inspect and uh, look for any. Loose screws or loose uh, ivy in, in itself, and a quarterly washing. And, um, you know, we've uh, been providing that ongoing service uh, since the installation, which was in 2019, and on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, uh, up through this time. Thank you. Shane down here in Chula Vista. Um, I have questions. What's like the largest area that you've covered with? With it, uh, uh, the Long Beach sound wall was about uh, a thousand linear feet, and we went up about 10 feet high. Okay. And then, do you guys have applications for like for signs, like road signs and stuff, too? You know, the the um, what we can do is uh, customize for road signs or any you know flat surface for the most part. Uh, uh, we have uh, the, the actual. Tiles come in one by one uh, foot um, pieces, and we can customize to any shape or form. Okay, yeah, I'd definitely be interested in hearing a little more. So I'll get your info within this. Excellent. This is David again. Um, is it is it just one pattern, or do you have different types of, of samples, like with flowers? You know, in the vi you know, in, in the video, you you probably saw several different. Uh, samples of patterns and colors but we found that um, uh, the uh, now we can you know mat, mis, mix and match colors however we found that the uh, commercial grade which is a uh, heavy duty backing that will allow for uh, you know the heavy traffic for taggers and uh, we found it being most effective uh, with this one particular pattern at this time. Any other questions from our panelists? So this is Craig Williams. Is there a warranty on this product? Uh, there's a three year warranty. So I do have a couple questions from the audience, uh, Joe. Let's see. So is Green Cape recyclable at the end of the seven year lifespan? We have not. Uh, well, let me qualify that. Uh, as a company, we have not recycled. However, the manufacturer uh, can and uh, has been uh, using recycled um, uh, material. Okay. So and the answer is yes. 
Great. And how do you maintain Green Cape? Is there a schedule of services to periodically clean and repair any damage? Uh, all of our installations, there's been a maintenance agreement uh, associated with it. And uh, that maintenance agreement uh, requires or calls for a monthly inspection of, of the site and a quarterly washing. Okay, great. And then are you SBDBE or DBBE certified? We're SBE and DBE certified. Okay, great. Any other questions before we move on? No? Okay, well, thank you so much, Joe. We really appreciate you being here today. Thank you for having me. And then I just wanted to let the audience know that if you have any questions for Lynn, um, please feel free to drop those questions in the chat and I can always um, go back to Lynn so that she can address those questions. Okay, so we can go ahead and move on to our next vendor, which is from Black Box Safety. Black Box Safety is a distributor of safety supplies for government agencies that value supplier diversity. Our expertise lies in the ability to identify your safety needs and recommend the best products for the job. Visibility can mean the difference between life and death. That's why the Guardian Angel wearable safety light is a perfect fit for the state of California Department of Transportation. The light is a wearable safety light. Its built-in magnet and corresponding mount provide over 22 mounting options that allow the light to attach directly to any hard hat, safety vest, armband, safety cone, and many more mounting options. The light provides over five miles of visibility as well as 360 degree visibility. Its lighting and controls on the light allow for the wearer to adjust four brightness modes and 18 high powered LEDs. Some things to consider. On the roadside job sites where vehicle traffic is present, Guardian Angel lights reduce the risk of workers being injured by oncoming traffic. Workers feel safer when they have access to tools that allow them to be visible by those around them, which will result in higher productivity and greater safety. Visibility makes it easier for drivers to see the workers. While accidents may occur, those relating to lack of visibility will be decreased or eliminated. Your employees gain several benefits when they have access to the tools that allow them to be properly seen. That's why the Guardian Angel is a brand that's currently being utilized by the United States Department of Transportation and many statewide locations such as Department of Transportation, Illinois, Louisiana, Maryland, and hopefully very soon, the state of California. We appreciate your nomination and hope that you will consider Guardian Angel Lighting to make your workplace a safer workplace. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to invite Jackson Dalton and Griffin Forsyth. Are you here today? I'm here. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Panelists, do we have any questions for Jackson? I'll ask a question. What is the life expectancy of your product? They have a lifetime warranty. Okay. And does it require batteries or are they rechargeable? It's rechargeable. Yeah. So there's just a, uh, a USB tether that plugs directly into the light. Um, I charge mine every couple of days. Uh, it's a very popular product with law enforcement. Therefore, it's really, really durable. Uh, it's designed for the field, designed to be used every day um, the battery span is incredible it'll go eight hours um, but most people toggle it on and off it's you know typically not kept on continuously uh, depending on the exposure to the hazard so yeah it's great it's also um, waterproof and fireproof it, it goes up to a sustainable 500 degrees fahrenheit uh, heat resistance it's a real durable light Awesome. And what's the color of the light? Is it like warm or? Oh, they're available in, in all different color combinations. So I think okay. this one right here is a white and red. 
Um, the one that Griffin has right now is green and orange. Yeah. So law enforcement, they use red and blue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, panelists, if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, this is David from um, materials engineering. Uh, does it clip on? Does it, how, how do you, how do you attach it? There's 22 different mounting options. I showed a few in the video. There's a hard hat mount. Uh, this is a universal mount. So this can be mounted anywhere. There's like a, uh, uh, a magnetic back. So it, it would just clip on your clothing. Um, in the video, I had a, the jawbone clip. So that'll clip onto any piece of gear. Um, there is a traffic cone mount. So uh, just drops into the top of a traffic cone. But uh, the mounts are relatively inexpensive. They're like $10 a, a mount. So you can, it's reasonable to have many different mounts available uh, depending on the application. So, so, so for the traffic cone mount, um, how much is the light, by the way? Because it seems like uh, it would get hit uh, if it was on the traffic cone. Uh, yeah, traffic cones get hit a lot on our freeways, and, and I'm just wondering the expense of of replacing that that light when it when it gets hit. Well, so it wouldn't be reasonable to put it on all your traffic cones. It would be a traffic cone that is temporarily near a human. So, like the wear. If he was near a traffic cone, he would remove it from his vest and put it on the traffic cone if he wanted some temporary protection. Um, so, but the, to answer your question, the lights, there's two price points. There's a $60 light and a $150 light. So it depends on, on the light that you purchase. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, this is Jeffrey from Caltrans. I have a quick question. <clears throat> Is it uh, authorized to put these in uh, traffic cones and at night? It could be distracting to traffic. Um, just a quick thought that I came to my mind. Yeah, I'm not qualified to answer that question. That, yeah, I I think we would have to run that through uh, Caltrans uh, EHS. It does have different brightness settings though, so you can tone down the brightness. I think it's got what, four, four different, different levels. Yeah. Yeah, brightness settings. Yeah. But it it was engineered uh, for DOT use, and there's four states that I know of that are currently using it in their DOT. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One question, are you the original equipment manufacturer holder of the patent, or are you a third party reseller? No, we're a value added reseller. So okay. we're a distributor of safety products. So we sell Tyvek, fall protection, uh, disposable gloves um, for Caltrans District 7. We've done disinfecting wipes and hand sanitizer. We've done a lot of welding supplies for all the 29 uh, state correctional facilities. So we're a distributor of safety supplies. Um, if you buy fall protection from us, uh, any order for fall protection, uh, you'll receive complimentary fall protection training. I've been teaching fall protection for 15 years. So we're a full service uh, personal protective equipment distribution company. And we're located here in El Cajon, uh, right near uh, Gillespie Field. Okay, great. And then one last question. What are your certifications? We are DVBE and small business. Okay, great. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right, so we'll go ahead and move to our next vendor. This would be Vasishta Consulting International. I'm Bala Vasishta, founder, CEO of Vasishta Consulting International. We are a professional engineering services provider for both public and private sectors. We are incorporated in 2019 as a California micro small business entity limited liability company. Assista Consulting is a certified DBA, MBA, SBA, CUCP certificate number 49387. We provide A&D, MEP, exterior, interior system engineering services that include computer aided design, instrumented control system design, process control system design, value engineering, graphic design, chart and infographics. At Assista Consulting, we seek to deliver truly innovative and state-of-the-art cost-effective design 
and engineering services for our clients. Our vision as a consultancy company is to build a global design engineering capability by focusing on client pursued value and development and the design product of their complete satisfaction. Core values, provide superior client service that meets or exceeds their expectation. Be innovative, entrepreneurial with integrity, be honest, ethical, and trustworthy. Offer value added practical solution to client design meeting challenges. Key differentiators, expert, experienced designers, strong engineering background, focused and detail-oriented designs, multi-vendor relationships to control cost, assured stakeholders, complete satisfaction for services, our designs or your imagination made visible. I am very confident that given the opportunity, we shall build a purposeful partnership by earning your trust and building a successful long-lasting partnership with equity. Thank you, Bala Vasista. Okay, so I'd like to welcome Bala to the stage. Bala, how are you? Hi, thank you, thank you very much. So I wanted to ask if you could tell us about any innovative projects you've been on. Uh, we have not won anything yet. Uh, we just two years old, but innovative projects when I was working for about 42 years, there were some um, international recognition and military recognition, those things. Okay, and what certifications do you have? Uh, I have DBE, SBE, MBE, uh, CUCP certified, Caltrans, uh, uh, BART, and the Metro. Okay, great. Do we have any questions from our panelists? This is David. Um, I'm, I'm just want to make sure I understood it. This is like a, a design consultant company. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, correct. Uh, professional design, including uh, energy efficiency, so sustainment, uh, all those. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Feel free to unmute. Okay, well, thank you so much, Bala. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Take care. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move on to our next vendor. We have Macro Industries. Hello, my name is Dana Moran, the Operations Manager for Macro. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Industries in California, GPS certified small business are also an approved California vendor, and our vendor ID zero two one eight seven. Macro Industries has been safety in specialized in answer class two and class three. In addition to our blank like also offer decoration. Macro Industries offers one of the lowest prices in the industry. We have wide selection of styles of shoe stock. Our company's philosophy is to provide top-notch products done parallel to customer needs. Our dedicated design team, production team, service team will ensure every order exceeds our customer needs. Macro Industries has a five-star rated supplier. We are proud to provide products and services to customers like California, Amazon, Walmart, FedEx, Disney, and I'd like to show you one of our products that would fit your needs. This is our ANSI Class 3 vest with three and tape that is similar to what we've seen Caltrans use. We're confident this vest will meet or exceed your quality expectations. Another item our class 2 LED safety vest. Battery operated flashing and solid LED lights which create additional visibility for your crew. Please let us know how else we can be of service to ensure the safety of 
valuable asset to your employees. Thank you for choosing Macro Industries to present today. Have a good night. So I'd like to invite Charles, Eric, and Dana. Charles, Eric, and Dana, are you here today? Hi, Eric. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi. Good, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. I'm so sorry on our side, the video looked like it was cutting out a lot, so I apologize. If That's anybody... okay. Is there anything you wanted to touch on that maybe didn't sound too clear on the video? Yeah, um, we do. We are a safety apparel manufacturer. We manufacture ourselves and we have large customers such as Disney. We already have a Caltrans vendor ID. We do sell to Caltrans. Um, we've sold to FedEx and other large uh, uh, customers. We are minority business certified and small business certified. So um, is there any questions? Anybody uh, want any more information on any of the safety apparel? Yeah, panelists, do we have any questions? This is David again. <laughs> um, David. Hi, um, I got a question for you. Uh, that that vest that lights up, um, uh, is it solar powered? Is it rechargeable? How, is it battery powered? And, 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 and then is there's different settings? In other words, I saw it flash, but can it be just constantly lit up? Yeah, so it is battery operated. Um, you can use rechargeable batteries. I prefer that for the environment. Um, it does come in different settings, so different flashing settings, how fast they can go. Also, it can stay solid. Um, if someone wears it, it lasts a few days. So, um, and then, you know, recharge the batteries after that. But it is one of our most popular selling vests right now. So we really thought it would be a good idea for Caltrans. Two double and I have it right here. It is two AA batteries. Yes. Very small. You can just turn it on with a push of a button. And it fits inside a little pocket right on the inside. Lower. And then when you go to wash it, it is detachable so that you're not washing the battery pack. There you go. It, and this is David again. Is that feature available in the other type of uh, uh, vest, the the the, uh, the one with the pockets? Not yet, but um, we are the manufacturer, so we could make anything to fit your needs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does it have a warranty? We do. Um, usually, it's about a year. All of our products are covered. So if um, in a year and a half it doesn't work, maybe we can just get you a replacement or, uh, you know, kind of customer service is our number one thing. Like, I want to highlight that customer service is the number one thing. So we want to work with you and make sure you guys are all satisfied. Okay, great. Do, do you only do vests or do you do hard hats and, and maybe pants as well? We do. We have um, the safety pants that you guys wear as well. We have hard hats. We have rain gear, the bomber jacket. Our pants are in the safety orange and the safety yellow. They are ANSI certified, so they are ready to go. My model okay. back. <laughs> <laughs> Can those be uh, lit up as well? Sure. We could, we could always maybe design something custom for Caltrans. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And then I, I know you mentioned you've um, had projects with Cal or contracts with Caltrans. What district specifically have you worked with? Uh, the Los Angeles Los one. Angeles. So we already have the vendor ID number, so we're ready to go. As soon as you guys order, we're ready. Okay, great. Panelists, any other questions? And then before we go, um, just in case uh, the audience didn't catch it, what are your certifications? We are small business certified. Also, we are minority business owned. And, 
And um, just before I let you guys go, we can also decorate so we can add your Caltrans logo. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so All much right, for having thank us. You. All right, so we'll go ahead and end this portion. Um, that concludes our two minute Q&A segment. So for anyone who did not have an opportunity to ask their questions today for any of our vendors and you'd like more information about their company or product, we will share the links to the video, the supplemental slides, as well as the vendor contact information shortly after our three day event concludes. And I'd like to bring Maria back out so that she can provide some closing remarks. Thank you, Alex. Wow, a uh, really good presentation and the pitch. Um, really happy that we have uh, those, these vendors for all the panelists to see. I uh, wanna thank everyone again for joining us in our first meet the district purchase, purchasers session for the day. I'd like to thank all our district purchasers again for participating in this event and providing relevant information. Also, would like to give thank you to Fantastic Design, Intuitive Real Estate Solutions, Black Box Safety, Vashista Consulting, and Micro Solutions uh, for taking time to prepare their pitches to District 11. Um, thank you to all the attendees joining us today. We hope you found this information beneficial. Um, so we hope to catch you again all this afternoon session. We will have different panelists, so we'll feature a whole new set of purchasers and additional needs list. We have uh, representatives from our Transportation Management Center, TMC, Business Services, Design, Engineering, Corridors, Facilities, Resource Planning, Traffic Operations, and Surveys. So if you have not done so, please visit the link. It'll be in your chat box there uh, to register. And we hope to see you this afternoon. So once we close out this session, you will be prompted with our post event survey. Please take time to fill this out. It will allow us to improve our future events. Um, all resources, like mentioned earlier, we'll uh, discuss today will be shared with those in attendance along with the recording of this session shortly after the conclusion of our three day event. So hopefully in the next uh, a week or two. If you have any questions between now and then, you may reach out to our small business team at d11.smallbusiness.dot.ca.gov. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs>